think is important and will make the point. On the first day of summer, the sun is as high in the northern sky as it's going to get. It's not going any further north than the first day of summer. It is directly overhead as high in the northern hemisphere as it's going to get. Each day, from the first day of summer, each day it moves imperceptibly. It moves one degree southward each day, moving, going southward. When it hits the halfway point, it is now crossing over the equator at the halfway point, and now it is going to fall, and that's why we call it fall or autumn fall because the sun is now falling it's going and consequently it keeps moving until it hits the halfway point which it crosses over the equator now it is the spring in the southern uh, uh, equator and in the northern hemisphere it is now fall coming of winter but in as i said but in rio and in brazil it is now spring because it's going to go three more months until it hits the last, the first day of winter. And the first day of winter, the sun is as low in the, in the southern sky as it's going to get. And that's the first day of, of summer for Rio. That's why the birds and smart people with money fly south. For the, if you got money, you go south and follow the sun, right? So consequently, the sun which which was doing just fine. It was really hot and doing great. And then and when it reached the halfway point, the constellation that it hits every fall is the constellation of Scorpio. Scorpio is the constellation that begins autumn. And therefore, it's this kiss of death. The scorpion has kissed God's son, and now he's going to be led to his death in Capricorn. He's going to die. He has fallen. The great Son of God has fallen. And he's going to fall all the way down to the southern hemisphere until it hits the first day of winter, which is December 22nd. Yes. On December 22nd, the sun rises on the lowest latitude, on the lowest point in the southern sky. Now follow what I'm saying. The sun rises on the lowest degree on the 22nd on the 23rd the sun rises on the same identical degree it's so perceptive the u.s navy has instruments to tell you it did not move one degree south it did not move one degree north it's on the same identical degree on the 24th it rises and it's still on the same identical degree Therefore, they, the ancient Egyptians knew that, and they said God's son was dead for three days. And But on the fourth day, which was December 25th, the United States Navy devices will tell you that the sun moved one degree northward, one small degree northward. It's just enough because the ancient people said anything that was dead for three days and has just moved one degree northward is born again. It's come back to life. Now it is on its way back to the northern hemisphere. And consequently, when it gets to the next quarter point, which is spring, and at spring it crosses back over the equator, on its way back to coming back to full grown and full into the northern hemisphere. Consequently, when, it, when you die today, we say the same thing the ancient Egyptians said. When someone dies, we say, Grandmother passed last night. Grandfather passed away. Or uncle passed on. Always the word associated with death in the ancient world was passed. You passed last night. Grandmother passed on. But in the Egyptian, they said that when you died, you left from one world and went into another world so you passed over into a next world so when you died they said grandfather passed over last night and i've even heard that term grandmother passed over last night why because the sun which was brilliant and sun uh, on in the summer 
it hit at halfway point, it crossed over the equator, so it passed over the equator going to the full day of full summer in the southern hemisphere. In the spring, it's coming back and it passes over the equator again coming back. And in the ancient world, there was a celebration in the northern hemisphere because the sun, which was dead in winter, has been reborn on December 25th and has now come back to life. And they called it the Passover. So that the Passover is nothing more than the sun passing over the equator. The Passover. Okay? So consequently, when you're old, oh, the very holy, old, oh, the Passover, what are you talking about? Sun worship, airhead. Wake up. That's all it is. It's just worship of the sun passing over. And so consequently, the Passover happens on the first week of spring. Well, isn't that strange? that it would happen in the first week of spring. Now, of course, Christians would not want to have anything to do with this because this is the Jewish uh, celebration of the Passover. So Christians wouldn't have anything to do with that. But we're still going to be worshiping the sun. But let's call it, let's say that uh, instead of the Passover, let's say that God's son is, say, resurrected. Let's say he's resurrected and has come back to life. Well, the sun has been resurrected. It has passed over. And so Christians go out on the first day of, of, of Easter, Ishtar, uh, and have an Easter sunrise service. Why? Because that's all it is with sun worship. You're worshiping the sun on a sunrise service because the sun has passed over, and the Jews call it Passover, Christians call it resurrection. Wake up, it's just sun worship. And until such time as you understand that God does not have anything to do with ignorance. It has nothing to do with the pagantry and all the crap that we have been fed by government, religion, politics, church, and all of it. It's all manipulation. What we need to understand is that there is a divine presence in the universe that demands justice and demands intelligence. And that's what I'm here to do, to help people to understand to get back in tune with the divine nature of the universe. And I believe that that's going to be required very soon because when all the systems break down and the Christians for the first time begin to think about it, where is Jesus? I would have thought he would be back by now. You need to understand that there's a very powerful story in the New Testament that is telling us what God's thoughts are. But you need to understand it is symbolic and there's a powerful story there. And one day, if I am invited back, I will do nothing more than for four hours do a whole theological discussion about the New Testament and the real story that's encoded in the New Testament because I believe it's a very powerful story. But it's not the one you think it is. So consequently, my last comments are, I do not wish to offend, I wish to educate. Because I believe that's what the divine presence in the universe would want is truth. Know the truth and it will set you free. And I want to thank you.